Hello and welcome to episode 187 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is June 5th, 2023. Today I'm wearing two fairly old pieces, but I've both, um, I've only worn them once before on the podcast. Um, so I thought that was interesting. So that seemed like a It seemed like a good idea to wear them again. So the shawl I'm wearing is the Via Jante by Martina Behm. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you know Martina Behm, a very well-known um, German knitwear designer. And the Via Jante, I think, is one of her um, most famous and most knit um, designs, I think. Um, this was the first time I knit the Via Jante. My sister has knit it. I don't know how many times, probably a dozen times, she keeps knitting them and giving them away, but she always keeps some for herself as well. And she's knit one for me, um, <clears throat> where she has knit most of the uh, project and I only knit the lace edging at the end. So the Via Jante looks like a long <clears throat> triangular shawl, but the interesting thing about it is that it's knit in the round so it's it's double layer if you wear it like a triangle, but that means you can um, wear it like a cowl or a loop or even like a poncho or a pullover. So it's really very versatile and um, and I just love it. So this is almost like a pullover with a big um, cowl and it has a very long end <clears throat> that can look very elegant hanging down there. Um, but you can also wear it like this. If you want to put on a jacket on top of it, you can also take the end and wrap it round um, so it doesn't hang down or get tangled somewhere. Um, and it's really nice and warm this way. So there's many ways to wear a Via Jante. And um, I've just worn this a lot in my last holiday. It's just fresh out of the washing. And, um, and I've decided I probably need more I already own three, <laughs> but because I love wearing this one so much, I thought it would be nice to have another one just for everyday wear. And then I have one that's um, that has very special yarns with silk and mohair and um, it's hand dyed. So I only wear that on special occasions and it has a rather special color as well. And the other one that my sister knit is um, she held two yarns double. So it's fairly warm and thick so I can't wear it every day so um, and this was knit out of Lana Grossa lace merino so it's a thin yarn but it's a pure merino and it was um, <clears throat> I was using odd balls that I had in my stash so I already had one ball of this color then one ball of this color that just go together perfectly then I had one ball of this gray um, mixed color and then I had a black yarn but then I um, swapped it with a friend who gave me this dark gray because I think this looks better with this kind of gray and with the first three um, balls of yarn I just knit the complete ball so I had no leftovers there and at first I thought I was going to knit um, the complete fourth one as well but then I um, just got too tired <laughs> knitting this lace pattern it's a very simple pattern the pattern is it's I knit, I actually knit the lace pattern that's in the pattern, whereas with the other Via Janta, I always picked a different lace pattern. Um, but the beads are not in the pattern, so I decided to put beads in because I just love beads. I have beads in all my Via Janta lace edgings. <laughs> and this was the first time I used these square beads. So I thought they were really funny. Yeah, and I like it. As I said, I wear it a lot, especially on holiday. I love wearing it when I'm riding my bike because I, I can wear it many different ways. Um, yeah, and the colors do go with a lot of the things that I have. But um, but it also means I always wear the, the blue and purple things <laughs> on holiday. So <clears throat> that was another reason to maybe knit one in a different colorway. I knit my Via Jante between May and August 2013, so it's actually 10 years old, but it's holding up really nicely and I love wearing it. Now the pullover I'm wearing, the pattern is called Leah and it's by Lisa Richardson 
and I used the Rowan Kitzel Case Stripe yarn and it's the exact same yarn that she used for the design. I think it's even the same color. <clears throat> and the interesting thing is I cast this on January 1st, 2013, so more than 10 years ago. And it's not a really big pullover, but I finished it March 18th, 2016. <laughs> <laughs> so it took me more than three years to knit this. So it's always very interesting, I think, to go back and look at the numbers. And sometimes I knit a huge big thing, uh, which used a lot more yardage. And I, it only took me like four months. And this fairly simple pullover took me more than three years to finish. So um, you start at one sleeve, then you increase for the body, then you split for the neckline, you do the two pieces... And I think you just end up on the other sleeve. Don't remember, it's a long time ago. But I love um, the pullover. It's, a, as I said, very simple design, very simple pullover. But I'm just a big fan of mohair and silk. So um, <clears throat> I really, really like this simple pullover. And I'm not putting on the Viajanta now. It's a bit too warm. But I did want to show it to you. So that's what I'm wearing today. Then on to finished objects. I have two finished objects, but I actually only have one with me. I'll explain about that in a minute. But the first finished object, object, I'm, object I'm really happy to be able to show you is the Hexi Loop by Yuki Knit that I test knit or preview knit. Um, the pattern still isn't hasn't been published, so I checked before I started recording. Um, I'll try and remember to um, tell you when it's out, but I have put a, um, I put something on my Ravelry page so that once the pattern is published, it will automatically link to it. So if you check my project page, there's no link, then the pattern hasn't uh, been published yet. And as soon as it does, um, there will be a link. So I used Lang Yarns, one ball of Lang Yarns yarn. And it took me slightly more than 10 grams to do one of these hexes, which means I only managed to knit nine out of that ball of yarn. So I used a different yarn, and that's this one, to do the 10th hexy. And so all in all, it's 10. And I sewed them together like in two lines. So five on top and five below. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how it looks. And I'll show you how I wear it and what it looks like on me and that it's actually big enough to go around my neck twice next week because I'll be wearing it next week. Maybe the pattern will be published by then, um, but we'll see. Yeah, really happy with that finished project. Um, the knitting had already been done, but it took me some time to sit down and sew things together. But in the end, it wasn't a big deal. It didn't take too much time. And I'm quite happy with the seams as well. They are not bulky or anything. I just um, very simply stitch the outer edges of the cast on edge together. Yep. Yeah, that's that. The other finished object that I don't have here are the socks that I knit for my sister, the, um, the lacy. Uh, eight ply socks that I, I think it was a new project last week, um, but I did hurry up and finish them because my sister isn't at home at the moment and I had the chance to give them to someone to bring them to her and I thought it's more important for her to get them now. Um, <clears throat> but I took photographs and maybe you remember I had two 50 gram balls of yarn and I knit the socks toe up so I could use the whole um, ball of yarn and this shows you the finished socks. And this is what I had left over after I cast off the second sock. <clears throat> and this is the complete socks side view. So you can see that I did the rib on the back and the lace pattern on the front of the sock. This is another picture. And then I, this is the lace pattern. So I knit the pattern toe up, even though it's written cuff down but I think the lace pattern still looks nice and um, my sister promised me that as soon as she's back home um, she will give them to me so I can show them to you for real <laughs> and then and maybe we can see um, what the yarn looks like after 
the socks have been worn and washed and everything. Um, yeah, so that's the second finished object for today. I do have three new cast-ons, <laughs> but um, that's the way things go. So talking about <clears throat> works in progress, the um, older sock I have on my needle are the uh, another lace pattern from the same book that I'm knitting as part of the pattern battle with the Opal Abo yarn, the subscription yarn. So we're using this color and I finished the first sock. This is knit cuff down. Um, I knit everything as it's written in the pattern except for the length. I knit fewer rounds um, to get the size that I wanted and I just did my favorite start toe. And then before I started the second sock, I was checking uh, at which point in the color repeat I stopped knitting and I stopped somewhere around here. So this color is the same color as this. And I noticed that I started this sock somewhere around here. So if I had started the second sock straight away, the stripes, the color stripes would have been almost the same. And um, you know, I like different socks. Uh, I don't mind if they're the same. Sometimes I do go for two identical socks, but I don't really like the stripe pattern to be just a little off. I think that I like it to be really off, but if it's just a little off, it looks a bit, I don't know, as if I hadn't uh, thought about it or if as if I had tried and not managed. So I wasn't really happy with that. <clears throat> and I was thinking of just winding off some yarn to get rid of this purple color and then start somewhere around here. But then I thought winding off yarn is always a bit stupid. I don't know what to do. It's just a few meters. I don't know what I can do with that. So instead of winding off yarn, I decided to just knit a tiny sock. <laughs> so I cast on 20 stitches, uh, did a few garter rows, then a bit of stockinette. I did a garter stitch, heel flap and gusset heel. <laughs> <laughs> and then I finished the sock and I hadn't finished all the lilac. So I thought, well, I think I have to knit another one. And I didn't want to do the same thing again. Uh, you know, I get bored very easily. But I had heard a lot about the banana sock. I don't know if you've heard of the banana sock, but the banana sock is another sock that you can knit without a heel. So this is what the sock looked like. And it kind of looks like a banana because of the shape it has. And if I pull it straight, you can see I just knit a long tube, not very long, a tiny little tube. But what you do is you knit half the stitches in a two by two rib pattern. And the other half of the stitches, you switch between stockinette and reverse stockinette. And because this is a rip like this way, and this pulls in like this, um, the sock looks like a banana. And I'll just put in a, like this chip that you use when you go shopping. And if I put this in like where the heel is supposed to be, you can see if you put something in, it looks like a sock. And you can do that like in normal human size. <laughs> and you can get socks that fit everyone. I think they might even fit better than a spiral sock. I'm not too sure, I haven't knit them uh, yet. But um, the advantage of a spiral sock is that you can put it on any which way and you will walk on different parts of the sock whereas with this the two by two rib is always going to be the sole so this is always going to be what you stand on but I still think they look nice and they're funny and so they do maybe walk through uh, wear out a little quicker but that's okay so this is the very first banana sock I ever knit and I will definitely knit a uh, pair of big banana socks at some point. Yeah, so I <laughs> I knit these tiny little socks just to get rid of this, of some of the yarn, to get to a different point in the color repeat. And then I started the second sock. And this is what I've knit so far, just a bit of ribbing and then a bit of the lace pattern. But if I hold them next to each other, you see the color stripes are completely offset. And I think the purple stripe should be next. So I'm in this yellow bit at the moment. So the purple should be right here. So this should be really nice. <clears throat> so another lace sock pattern battle. I'm, I should try and finish them quickly because we're at the moment voting 
for the colour for the next pattern battle. That's over in the Opal Abu group on Ravelry. Okay, the next sock I have on the needle are the other pair of film socks that I'm knitting. Um, so I'm, this was the first one. And this is the second one. And uh, this is another uh, situation where I actually wound off some yarn before I started the second sock because the first sock started off with the light color and, um, and I had a light cuff and a light heel. And I thought with the second one, I would like to have a dark cuff and a dark heel, but that didn't work out. So I did a dark cuff, but then I still got one dark film and then this film is light and then I got a light heel. So now I think that I will probably have a dark film here, maybe a mixed one here and probably a light toe again, which is okay because this is almost a dark toe. Oh, it's a rather dark toe. I think it's the same um, spot in the color repeat as this one. So yeah, the socks are going to be different. They're not exactly <laughs> what I had planned. They should be, but that's okay. They don't have to be exactly what I planned. Still love the pattern. Still have several pairs of film real socks in my future. So that's that. Then now I'll show you all the new cast ons. They just happen to be in the same sort of category, but they're not all socks. <laughs> Only the next uh, project is a pair of socks. And um, that's another, that's one of the um, extra balls of yarn that I ordered with my last subscription box. So with the Opal subscription, you always get six balls of yarn and you don't know which color you're getting, but you can always um, go ahead and order some more yarn and you don't have to pay any postage. And sometimes they offer special colorways or special offers, whatever. <clears throat> and this time they offered two special colors in the Black Dragon colorway. So black dragon means that um, they use a black yarn that sort of changes from very thin to not quite as thin and that spun into the colorful yarn. And there have been I think two or three proper series with black dragon colors but this is one of the special colors that was available now. I think it's available in the Opal um, online shop at the moment. And I really, really like the color. I like the contrast of the white and the colorful, the bright colors with the bit of black in there. And uh, when I looked on Ravelry and looked at what other people had uh, knit with this yarn, there was one pair of socks where someone had combined this yarn with this color. And this is another special yarn that you can only get in the online shop, not like in the normal, uh, with the normal, um, Opal yarns and this is just black and white but um, again with this black being thinner and less thin in places and I was um, given that bowl of yarn by a friend of mine several months ago I don't know when she gave it to me but when I saw that person combine these two and I think she knit the heel and toe with this color and I decided I'm absolutely going to steal that idea I want to do the same but I decided I'll also knit the um, ribbing in the black and white. And this is what I have knit so far. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Because there's also black and white in the main color, it sort of looks the same. And it looks as if it just happened to be more white here. And I really like it. Now this thing that's hanging down here, this is a... Um, you can count your rows or rounds with that. And it works as a, like a stitch marker. So this is where my round begins. But every time I start a new round, it, instead of just um, switching over to the other needle, I try and go one ring further. And as soon as I get down to my little elephant, I know I finished 10 rounds. And once I finish 10 rounds, I put one of those um, light bulb markers in. So it's easy to count. The, one of the reasons I'm not too big a fan of um, stockinette socks is that it's difficult to count the rows and to get the two socks the same. And uh, especially with this yarn, it makes it really difficult to count the rows. And so this is a really good idea. It was given to me by another friend who makes them herself. And um, yeah, so I, I've 
used to do that. I've done that before, putting these markers in every 10 rounds, but I used to always count them. But with this, I don't really have to count them. I just have to remember when I move it over to go one step further down. So, colorful black dragon socks. Then that's all the socks. Then I have one project that's sort of knit on double pointed needles. And that's the new uh, Mystery Gnome by Sarah Shearer. So it's Mystery Gnome time again. I'll show you the colors that I chose. It's a three color gnome. And I decided to use those three colors. And these are two mini skeins by Voldacke hand dyed yarns. And this is just a solid color by Opal. But I thought those three go together nicely. And um, I have finished clues one, two, three. I think the next clue comes out today. Um, and if you do not want to see it, you have to look away now because now I'm going to show clue one. This was clue one. Um, and it's a mystery piece, as she says in the pattern. So we have no idea what it is. It's a provisional cast on. And I put the stitches on hold. And then um, clues two and three were this one. So the beginning was clue two. And then the end was clue three. And um, it's lightly stuffed. And I have no idea what it is. And I'm not showing anything anymore. Um, so this is really exciting. And I think Sarah is getting better and better at... Um, keeping things really mysterious and uh, me unable to guess what, what they are going to be like within a gnome. <laughs> no idea. Yeah, so that's, and that's, that was the third new cast on um, and I hadn't, I didn't have the time to finish something else if I wanted to stay on top of all the clues. So that's why I um, started that without finishing anything else before. And then the third new cast on, you might guess, because last week I said I was only going to cast it on once I finished something else. And that's a new pattern by Nathan Taylor, the soccer matician, out of his Double Knit Brioche book. I'm really eager to knit through most of the book. <laughs> And I wanted to knit the hat that's called, um, it's called Thank You Beata, I think. And um, you need two colors, of course, because it's always two color brioche or two color double knit that he does. And I decided to use this Opal Hundertwasser yarn. So Hundertwasser colors are inspired by artwork by the artist Hundertwasser. And these are the only colorways that Opal keeps producing over and over again, all the other colorways, they appear and they disappear. But the Hundertwasser, there are 24 different Hundertwasser colorways. And I've always wanted to knit something with this colorway. Originally, I wanted to knit um, something for a baby, baby jacket, baby pullover. Maybe I'll do that at some point. But now I decided to use this for the hat. And as a contrast color, I chose this blue Alpaca Sock Yarn by Hamza Farm. So this is 75% alpaca, baby alpaca, 25% poya mid. So soft. It's basically a solid color, but it's not quite solid. So there are um, sort of different shades of blue in there and almost a hint of purple. Love the color and I think it's a nice contrast. <clears throat> and one of the reasons I wanted to knit this hat is because it uses a stitch that um, I think it's called Honeycomb Brioche and I've always loved this pattern. I've knit two pullovers in the past in that pattern and um, but it always had the pattern on one side and not on both sides and everything that the soccer magician does in his double knit brioche book is reversible. So this is just two color double knit brioche looks like this on one side, looks like this on the other side. And this is the honeycomb brioche. And I love this pattern. It looks as if the um, threads sort of are just floating on top of the dark blue background. And the way I used to knit this pattern, you had the back would always look like um, reverse stockinette stitch. It was really interesting because you knit you knit most of the stitches, you never pulled any stitch. You either knit or you um, slipped them and you still got reverse stockinette, which was interesting. But now 
it's reversible. So this is what the other side looks like. And it actually looks as if the blue yarns were floating on top of the um, light background. And from this side, the light actually looks like stockinette with the blue threads on top. And I don't know if you can see the blue stockinette stitches peeking through the threads. It may be difficult to see, but I love it. I love it. And it's actually not complicated at all. So um, again, his instructions are very clear and this pattern is so much easier than it looks. And I'll be able to wear this hat this way around or that way around. I will definitely knit it shorter than he does. I've knit everything so far. I've made I knit shorter than he knits the things, but he's a lot bigger and taller than me. Not bigger, taller. He's quite thin, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, so I'll I'll knit a shorter version of the hat. I probably knit it long enough so I can fold the brim, I think. We'll see. Um, yeah, I'm knitting the sock weight yarn on three millimeter needles. Um, and at first I was a bit worried it might be too small, but I did put in a long needle and I tried it on and it does fit me. So another double knit brioche pattern, really happy with it. So these were all the new cast-ons, quite enough. Now a few old projects that I've uh, continued knitting on. Um, first of all, I'll show you my cashmere pullover. And as I had planned to do, <clears throat> I knit the, the neckline. So I had started the pullover with a provisional cast on, so I already had the stitches, just needed to put them on the needle. I knit one round just sort of to get away from the edge. And then I went straight into a knit one per one rib. I'm using a different dye lot than the other black, but I don't think there's a difference. They really look the same. And um, yeah, I knit a few rounds, tried it on, knit a few rounds, tried it on. And after I think eight rounds, I decided this is long enough. It gives me a fairly open neckline but not quite as open as the pattern uh, calls for. And as I have already knit uh, a cowl in the same yarn, it doesn't have to come that high. I can always wear the, the cowl with the pullover. And um, yeah, I think it looks, looks good. So now the next step is going to be to knit the last ball of yarn in the old dye lot into the front and back. I will continue to, to do some decreases. I've already done a few decreases because I had a lot of stitches. Looking back, I actually should have started with a smaller size, but next time if I knit the same pattern again. Yeah, I'll knit the old dye lot, do some decreases, see how low I come. And then with the sleeves, I've decided I'll definitely start knitting the ribbing as soon as I start um, the new dye lot and then just have a long ribbing to give me long sleeves. And um, op optimally, can you say that? Um, what I'm hoping to do is after I knit this last ball of the old dye lot, start the ribbing with the new dye lot. And even if it's a long ribbing on my front and back, that should be okay, should be, um, it should look good with the long ribbing on the sleeves as well. And I'm not quite sure how long I want the pullover to be yet. Probably depends on how far I get with the, with the stocky, stockinette stitch and um, how much I decrease and what it looks like. I will try it on a lot <laughs> while I make these decisions. So this is the cashmere yarn by Hansa Farm. Such a beautiful, soft, warm yarn. Perfect. So that's a pullover. Then the Fragmentation Shawl by Stephen West. Still haven't finished the ball of yarn I'm working on, but I added a few rows. So the part of the shawl that's finished has grown to here. And I still need to knit this bit. Not too much. Finish this ball, start the next one, and then at some point I should be finished. I 
don't really need to put the markers in anymore because there won't be another wedge, but I just did for fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, so that's the Fragmentation Shawl by Stephen West. I did not bring the alpaca granny square lace huge square because I actually did not get to crochet on it. But I picked up a different project that I haven't shown in a long time. And that's my All the Memories blanket. Um, and the pattern is the Coziest Memory blanket. But I um, changed it in so far that I decided to do the first two rows of every square in black so that I do get this little tiny black frame around each square. And um, because of because I knit the black at the beginning of each square, two sides of each square are black and the other two sides aren't until I've added the next square. So um, the side where I haven't attached anything doesn't have any black. Um, so when I had the square of 10 times 10 squares, there were two black edges and two not black edges. And I've changed that because I've decided that 10 is as wide as I want the blanket to be. It's not huge. I have several really big blankets. So I decided I want one that's a bit smaller, that's maybe like a huge shawl or a small blanket. So I can use it as a blanket, but I can also wear it. It's, it's more of a wearable blanket than the other blankets that I have. So I have picked up stitches on this side of the of what I have so far. So you can see there's no black here, but this edge, I picked up stitches in black and then I cast them off straight away. And that sort of gives me the same amount of black as uh, on the other sides. So now three sides of my blanket already have their black edge and the fourth side doesn't. And I not only put the black edge on, I also added two squares. So this is the leftover yarn from the um, from the Sock Madness Socks round five. Um, it's not every which way, but I forgot what the socks are called. Um, they are called the Worst Way Socks. Yeah, and I also knit a different, another pair of socks uh, some months ago. I also crocheted a little square, a granny square. And now I've knit this um, square and I also, I still have a few grams left, but only very little. So that's that. And then I knit this square and this is a, this is a Opal subscription colorway, Opal Abo yarn. And I knit um, a pair of mitts, um, Pay It Forward mitts by Hochi Locatelli. And um, I used that yarn to knit this square. And then I picked up for the next square so this is what it looks like when you pick up stitches for the next square. I picked up the stitches, I knit one uh, row back and then I cut off the black yarn. And now I have to pick the next color to um, knit the next square. I was thinking of doing all the sock madness socks in one row, but I didn't have all the yarns at home and I, I just put that in as well. So it doesn't matter. I'll try and put as many sock madness socks of this year into this row as I can manage and um, yeah I'm hoping to finish that blanket at some point. So it's 10 squares wide. I'm not quite sure how long I want to make it probably either 14 or 15 or 16 squares long. We'll see. So that's that and then the last project as usual is my hexagon crochet jacket that we are doing as a crochet long. So um, yeah, I'm happy uh, for every post and every picture that I can see in the Ravelry group for uh, this YouTube channel and all the jackets that you are crocheting. So last week I showed you that the first half of my cardigan was done and I was still working on the red part of the second um, hexagon. I've now finished the red bit 
So I did, I think I did 20 rounds of um, as a hexagon. And this is still a hexagon, so I haven't crocheted the sleeve together yet. But I've started the blue, and now I think it's quite obvious that I am crocheting. I'm crocheting onto three sides, and I'm not crocheting onto the other three sides. So that means the three sides that I'm not crocheting on, they are going to form the sleeve. So this is the width that I want it, so I'm not adding anything to those three edges. But the other three edges that form the front, the back, and the lower bits of front and back, I'm crocheting onto these so that the cardigan grows longer and grows wider. And um, yeah, so that's where I'm at at the moment. <clears throat> that's the six ply opal rainforest yarn. And um, yeah, still enjoy that a lot. So that was everything I knit and crocheted last week. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.